Welcome to Arirang News and you're tuned in to our ongoing coverage of the recovery efforts and search for survivors of the sunken ferry. It's Friday, April 18th here in Seoul and I'm Choi Yusun. A major rescue operation for the capsized ferry off Korea's southwestern coast continues on this Friday evening where divers are reported to have reached inside the hull of the sunken ship. But there have been conflicting accounts all day about how successful they have been. For details, we'll go to the Arirang News Center. Hi, Chiwon. Uh, any updates? Hi, Yusan. Many reports are coming in now that the rescue divers successfully entered the third floor of the sunken ferry. But we have to wait a little more for confirmation. Well, the divers allegedly have been continuing search and rescue operations for the past few hours as they try to take advantage of the low tide to find survivors in the sunken ship. The rescue team is expected to continue their search operations throughout the night. Well, earlier in the morning, divers installed guidelines leading into the cafeteria that's on the third floor of the vessel. Later in the afternoon, they reached the freight car on the second floor and the steer station on the fifth floor. But the divers retreated just 14 minutes later after a guideline broke during attempts to break into the door to one of the compartments on the second floor. The divers have reportedly made it to the fourth floor, but no survivors have been found yet. There had been conflicting reports concerning the rescue operations throughout the whole day, so, um, which led the Central Disaster Safety Headquarters to issue an apology for their inaccurate updates. And Chiwon, the Co Korea Coast Guard announced within the past hour that a revision to the total number of passengers that were on board. Yes, Yusan, the Korea Coast Guard said the total number is 476, not 475, as previously reported. Also, they have revised the number down, um, uh, the number of rescued to 174. Chiwon, there are so many confusions from the very start of the situation, and even for us, it's frustrating. Hopefully, we'll get more confirmation on this unexpected change. And how are the families of the missing holding up? As for the families, as our Arirang correspondents re reportedly earlier, many at the Chindu Auditorium are crying in pain, praying for their loved ones to come back, but also shouting in frustration and anger towards the government about their slow progress in search and rescue operations, and also towards media covering the event. And really, no words can fully describe or explain what is going through the minds of the families at this moment. And another shocking revelation, the vice principal of Tanwan High School is believed to have committed suicide. Yes, Yusan, it was around five minutes past 4 p.m. Korea time when the vice principal was found hanged by his own belt from a tree on the hill behind the Jindo Auditorium. He was on board when the ferry was sinking two days ago and he was one of the few that were rescued. The principal has left a suicide note on his wallet, and he wrote that it's hard to live on not knowing whether 200 students are alive or not. The 52-year-old also added that he wished his body be criminated and thrown into the site of the accident and said he hopes he can be the teacher of the dead students in their afterlife. How tragic. And she won the joint team of prosecutors and police filed arrest warrants for three crew members, including the captain. Yes, the joint uh, investigation team filed arrest warrants this evening after intensively questioning the captain three times and raiding the office of the ferry operator earlier this morning. The team applied five different charges, including abandoning the sinking ship and rescuing himself before the safety of other passengers still on the boat. And under special criminal laws on specific crimes, the maximum punishment a captain can face for abandoning the ship could be life in prison. There are reports that the ship may have gone, undergone excessive renovation and, and this could have been a factor in the cause of the accident as well. Yes, the ship was last renovated in 2012 and the ship's weight increased by nearly 1,000 tons. 
As you can see from this image, the number of passengers the ship can carry also increased by more than 100. Experts say this might have played a factor in the ship listing so easily and losing the balance when taking a sharp turn. The investigation team on Friday also raided a shipyard in Mokpo that, re that renovated the ferry. And experts also point out the possibility that the cargo carried inside the ferry, hundreds of vehicles and thousand tons of other cargo may not have been tied down tightly and that the cargo could have slid to one side suddenly when the ship took a swift turn. And these all contributed to the ships losing the balance. It seems like a combination of so many problems together caused this tragedy. And lastly, the team in charge of investigating this disaster held a press briefing on their interim findings. What did we learn about who was steering the ship at the time of the disaster? Yes, the joint investigation team announced their interim report today that it's been confirmed that the ferry's 26-year-old third mate, not the captain, was steering the 6,800-ton ferry when the vessel encountered trouble and she started working for this company in December just four or five months ago and Korean regulations mandate a vessel more than 3,000 tons should be navigated by a first or second mate and considering that the Sewolhu ferry weighs more than twice that it's clear a violation of regulations. Fingers are being pointed towards the captain who is believed to have been away from the steering room at the time of the incident. However, regarding the exact location of the captain at the time of the crisis, testimonies have so far differed. In the meantime, every surviving member of the ferry's crew and the top management personnel of the ferry's operator have been banned from leaving the country. All right, Chiwan, please do keep us updated. And that was our Park Chiwan reporting from the Arirang News Center. Many questions still remain about the delay in the search and rescue efforts following the ship's capsizing. And with much of the criticism fueled understandably by emotions of those suffering from missing loved ones, I earlier spoke with a maritime expert to give us his analysis of how things are going. Here's Captain John Noble, director of UK-based Constellation Marine Services. Well, rescue divers attempted to enter the ferry earlier today, but to no avail. The delay has left families of the missing frustrated and restless. From your own experience, how do you assess the level of the ongoing efforts? Well, I, I think it's the level of the ongoing efforts are very much controlled by the conditions at the site. The first thing is the current. And that is, uh, that is quite strong. So free diving in the water is, is very difficult. The second thing is the sea temperature. And uh, the, the, the third thing is the weather, the wind, which creates waves which make it virtually impossible to get in the water. So all these divers sitting there are actually, they're helpless. They would dearly, I'm quite sure, love to get in the water and get on with it, but we have a tragic situation which could be made worse by putting divers or other rescuers into the water uh, where they, they too could suffer. Well, the vessel is now submerged underwater. Um, how viable is it at this point to increase the chance of finding survivors by pumping air into the sunken ship? Well, if anyone has reached uh, an air bubble, um, then the, the introduction of more air can only help, but whether it would go to the right place remains to be seen. Uh, if if um, people are trapped in the water, um, I'm afraid, and it's dreadful for the families, the chances of survival are practically zero because the sea temperature is so cold um, at 12 degrees that hypothermia would set in relatively quickly and I, I, I regret to, to say um, survival is unlikely. 
And the Korea's Coast Guard earlier said the sunken vessel, now presumably weighing some 100,000 tons with seawater, is slowly pushing down further into the seabed. Other than attaching airbags to it, what other ways are there to bring the ferry back to the surface? Well, the, 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 the natural weight of the ship will uh, force it into the seabed if it is sandy and to a degree. Um, but airbags would be, they're not of sufficient strength. Um, what they can do, they can uh, bring cranes in. There are cranes uh, available uh, not that far away that could probably lift the the underwater weight of the hull is, is not that much. The 100,000 tons is the figure of the volume of water that they estimate uh, might be there. I think that's a bit high. But the, the weight to be lifted by cranes is not insurmountable. Another technique that they might want to use is get some barges alongside where they fill them with water, put wires under the ferry and then pump the ballast out of the barges to try and lift the, the ferry off the seabed. So it is possible. The salvage cranes that will lift the Sewarho ferry up from where it sits have arrived at the scene a little earlier than expected. But it could take up to two months to get the 6,800-ton ferry to shore, and authorities aren't sure when the lift will start. Our Sung ji has the details. Four years ago, when the Korean warship Cheonan was sunk, it took one month to lift it from the ocean floor, and it weighed just one-fifth of what the Sewarho does. The passenger ferry, at more than 6,800 tons, is one of the largest operating in the nation. 180 vehicles and cargo weighing 1,200 tons were on board when the ferry departed Tuesday evening local time. Add that to the water that has since inundated the ferry, the total weight that the cranes will have to lift easily exceeds 10,000 tons. Four cranes with capacity of 10,000 tons combined have approached near the waters of the sunken site and are on standby. But the government says the lift will not be carried out without the consent of families of the missing, as shifting the vessel could jeopardize the safety of possible survivors, who at this point would have to rely on air pockets to stay alive. The ferry must be turned upright first in order to be lifted to minimize further damage and to stabilize the lifting process. Divers will fasten cable wires underwater to the vessel to lift it, but authorities say the lack of experience in lifting a vessel of this size, along with fast currents and poor visibility, could delay the process. Song ji Arirang News. While search and rescue efforts continue, investigators have also been looking at what caused the ferry to sink. The Korea Coast Guard has suggested that the most possible cause for the ship capsizing was that the ship veered off course and made an abrupt change of uh, direction. But there's still conflicting reports about whether it actually did. As Shin se reports. Speculation remains over whether the ship was actually following its directed path. There are conflicting reports still more than two days since the ship started listing. West Regional Headquarters Korea Coast Guard reportedly said the Sewolho is believed to have turned quickly, but added it is still too early to confirm the cause of the sunken ferry. Earlier, the maritime police said the ferry diverted slightly from the advised route, although not completely off course. The general director of the National Maritime Policy Agency said that all ships leaving Incheonport en route to Jeju Island are advised to go around Pyeongpungdo Island. However, the ship chose a different route closer to shore as a shortcut. The ferry chose to sail the path away from the advised route, but even then, it isn't considered off course. The Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries said otherwise. Officials in a report said that the Sewolho ferry was on track and followed the directed seaway. The chief of the Coastal Shipping Division, Kwon Jun Young, said there is no official term for an advisory or recommended route and that data shows the ferry took the path it intended to take. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. 
As the death toll continues to rise, the captain and surviving crew members of the sunken ferry are coming under fire for failing to follow proper safe guidelines. Our Polly reports on the crew's mistakes and what they could have done to save more lives. This flight training exercise shows how cabin crews are supposed to direct passengers during an emergency situation. The detailed instructions include how to prepare for an emergency landing and a safe exit of the plane. It's all basic routine procedures for air travel, but it's also required on all maritime passenger vessels. According to the Korea Coast Guard, the captain is responsible for ordering crew members to conduct safety demonstrations for passengers and keep them informed. But acting Captain Lee Jun Sok of the Seoul Ho Ferry failed to follow even these basic guidelines. Many of the survivors say they were rushed on board the vessel, receiving little or no safety training, such as learning how to put on a life jacket. The captain of the ship and some crew members also reportedly disobeyed maritime laws by abandoning the sinking ship, leaving hundreds of people to fend for themselves. But the mistakes don't end there. Testimony from survivors, text messages, and video have corroborated the fact that onboard announcements repeatedly asked passengers to stay put as the ferry was tilting before finally telling all the passengers to jump into the sea. <laughs> Experts say the order to remain indoors goes against proper procedure in the event of a flooding. If water has begun to enter and flood the ship, then you have to get the highest possible ground. The highest place is the deck. The lack of safety training, contradicting announcements, and absence of clear direction from the captain and crew may have caused a higher number of fatalities, as confused passengers search for a way out with little time to escape. Paul Yi, Arirang News. At times of crises at sea or in the air, the actions of the crew can be crucial in saving lives or perhaps in this case instrumental to endangering them. With eyes fixed on the captain of the Sewalho ferry, we look back at two recent disasters with two very different outcomes based on the captain's behavior. Our Kim Minji reports. In 2009, U.S. Airways Flight 1549 struck a flock of birds just minutes after taking off from LaGuardia Airport in New York City, and two of its engines lost power. The pilot immediately informed passengers of the situation and decided to make an emergency landing on the Hudson River. The rough landing was a success, and the passengers scampered out to the wings of the plane to be rescued. Not a single life was lost. Although it was a critical moment, the pilot and crew members stayed calm and were able to create what is known as a miracle on the Hudson. The pilot of the flight 1549, Captain Chesley Sullenberger, made sure that all passengers were off the plane before escaping himself. Because of their efforts and the calm, steady leadership shown by the plane's pilot and crew, uh, miraculously, all 155 people on that plane made it to safety. However, that wasn't the case when Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia sank after it capsized off waters in Tuscany in 2012. The ship struck a reef, causing a huge hole in the side of the liner. The scene turned to chaos in moments. Then we had a blackout, and everybody was just screaming out. All the passengers were running up and down. And then we, we went to our cabins to, to know, get to know what, what's going on. The captain abandoned the ship early on, leaving behind passengers who were in peril. 32 people were killed. The captain was arrested on charges of manslaughter, dereliction of duty, and escaping the ship before the evacuation was complete. Likewise, the captain of the Sewar Ho ferry is also being investigated to see whether he and some of his crew members abandoned the ship before making sure passengers had safely evacuated. Kim min Arirang News. <laughs> The 
world is reaching out to Korea during this very difficult time. U.S. President Barack Obama offered his deep condolences to the victims of the ferry disaster and pledged Washington's full support for the ongoing search and rescue operations during a news conference at the White House Thursday. Before I begin, I just want to express on behalf of the American people uh, our deepest condolences to the Republic of Korea and the families of all those uh, who've seen their loved ones lost when a ferry sank within the last couple of days. As one of our closest allies, uh, our commitment to South Korea is unwavering in good times and in bad. Uh, and that's Obama added that he will convey this message in person when he visits Korea for a previously planned trip next week. Earlier, the leaders of China, Japan and Singapore echoed his sentiments, along with Pope Francis, who delivered a message saying he will pray for the victims, their families and everyone involved in the rescue operation. It's almost inevitable that dramatic moments are caught on film in this day and age with smartphones. Newly released footage shows when the ship first encountered trouble. We have another amateur video from inside the ferry that reveals the harrowing moments when water started gushing in. Our Connie Lee has more. You can see the ferry from afar in the midst of the fog. The ship is listed about 45 degrees. This amateur video, captured about 30 minutes after the ship tipped over, shows the arrival of the first helicopters to rescue passengers on the deck of the boat. Merchant ships and fishing boats also approach the scene. The ferry has now listed even more, and you can see heavy shipping containers shifting on the deck of the boat. Fishing boats speed up closer to the scene in frantic attempts to rescue anyone on board. But the ferry is quickly submerged, with jets of water shooting out as the ship is nearly completely engulfed now. This just in about two hours' time. In another video taken on cell phone by one of the passengers shows the harrowing moments the ship started sinking. A passenger yells out that water is rushing in, water is rushing in. Other passenger videos have also been circulating on the internet in the past two days, including one that shows passengers clinging onto walls and their lives as the ship was slanted nearly 90 degrees. In the meantime, an announcement rings out on the loudspeakers. It tells passengers not to move and to stay put. And that's exactly what students here in this video are doing. The footage taken by a surviving passenger shows students staying where they are, some laying down with their life vest on inside the ship that is clearly starting to capsize. Connie Lee, Arirang News. It looks like we may be facing more complications during rescue operations tomorrow afternoon due to strong winds. For more, we connect live to our Kim bo -kyung at the Weather Center. bo -kyung, what's the latest? Well, Yusan, the weather on Chindo today was a lot better compared to yesterday, but that will only continue through tomorrow afternoon. Currently, it's a cloudy on Chindo with about 10.7 kilometers of visibility. Wind speed and height of waves are down to 1.5 meters meters per second and 0.5 meters respectively. The speed of tidal waves will have begun to slow down at about 10.25 p.m., which is about an hour ago. So that should make it a bit easier for uh, our rescuers to conduct uh, rescue operations. We will get four more opportunities tomorrow, each at uh, 5.40 a.m., 11.13 a.m., 5.12 p.m., and 11.13 p.m. However, things are looking pretty bad for tomorrow on Jindo with strong winds forecast to blow at a rate of 
of about 10 to 12 meters per second. Also, there is a high possibility that a wind wave advisory may be issued water south of the peninsula, which could affect conditions on Chindo. That's all the weather updates I have for Chindo at this hour, but I'll be back with more after midnight. All right, thank you, Po Gyeong, and that's all we have for you at this hour. Stay with us for the latest on the ongoing sunken ferry rescue operation on our next newscast at midnight Korea time.